Okay, I'm standing here down at Cabramatta Creek. For over 40,000 years, the Cabrigal people lived near this creek because it was a source of life. Plenty of wildlife, plenty of fish in the creek, good farming land. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. The hill of the creek now, you wouldn't drink that water. There's not very many fish in there and this is all overgrown with weeds. Not like it would have been in 1722, 300 years ago. This would have been a source of life and a safe place for the Cabrigal people to live. And that's why they came to live here. But this is the Cabramatta Creek, which about two kilometres down that way flows into the Georges River. And the Georges River and Cabramatta Creek, we get big floods here pretty often. And because of those floods, you get rich farming land. The flood makes the land nice and fertile for growing plants. And the Aboriginal people would have used that land. And subsequently, Irish farmers who came here also used that land to farm. So I'm going to go and tell you about the last great flood at Warwick Farm and Lawrence Hargrave School. So this is the story of the uh, last great flood at Lawrence Hargrave School. I taught on the Friday, this is the last in April, late April 1988, probably about the 29th of April, and then came into school on the Monday. Now it had been raining on the Friday, and on the Monday I came to school and I found things had changed a little bit. There had been a flood. That George's River had burst its banks down at Cabramatta Creek, and all of this area was covered in about four foot of water. Now if you have a look at these logs on the, field, on the hill over here, those logs were on the other side of the football field, and the water had picked them up and carried them and put them on that hill. And they've been there ever since 1988. Now, if you want to try and pick one of those up, they weigh a ton. There's no way you can pick them up. If you had a forklift, you could pick them up. That's how powerful the flood water was. So all of this area was completely covered. And now I'll go and show you the food tech room where you can see how high the flood came and how powerful that water was. So when we got to school on the Monday, which was the 1st of May 1988, we found a high water mark about here. They come up to the steps of the uh, food tech room, which meant it almost covered the courtyard, just come up to the edge of the courtyard. There was a high water mark right around the school. So the awning was underwater, and there was about that much water. So all the gym mats and everything were floating in the water on that Sunday. And all of this was flooded. The pool was under about four foot of water, the whole area, and right around through Warwick Farm. But the flood waters receded really quickly. So by the time we got back to school on Monday, this was all dry again, but you could see where the flood had been. And that's why Warwick Farm in this area is such good land for growing things, because anywhere where there's a floodplain, it's good for growing stuff. Good for bush tucker, which the Capricorn people used to live off, and they used to do a bit of farming themselves. So that's the story of the last great flood here at Lawrence Hargrave School, and there's another one due. There will be another one, it will happen again. So maybe we'll have more you're at the school. Anyway, story of flooding on the Georges River.